Good day students, welcome to mathgodserve.com. In this clip we're going to be going over how to expand binomials using Pascal's triangle. This is, a, this is part one of our multi-part series on expanding binomials using Pascal's triangle. Okay, so let's say we have the following um, task to accomplish, we are to expand x plus y to the fourth power. Now if you want to do this by distribution, it will involve writing down x plus y four times and then you will proceed to multiply um, it in pairs. So you multiply the first two, multiply by the third and then the final result by the fourth. This could be a long process and it's very easy to make mistakes when you're expanding binomials of really high degrees. Okay, so that's the beauty of Pascal's triangle. So we're going to expand this using Pascal's triangle. Now let's go ahead and create a triangle first. Now Pascal's triangle has infinite number of rows so the question is what row are we um, going to stop at? Since we're raising x plus y to the fourth power, that automatically means that um, we're going to be going to the fourth row. Okay, so since x plus y is raised to the power of four, okay, keyword here is four, we will generate Pascal's triangle to the fourth row, okay, to the fourth row. So bottom line is the power that you're raising your binomial to indicates the row that pa your Pascal's triangle will stop at. Now, where do we start from when we are generating Pascal's triangle? Remember that you always start from row zero. Okay, so row zero of Pascal's triangle is just one. Row number one is one, one. You always have ones at the end. Row uh, two. Now Pascal's triangle is generated by having ones at the end and you add the two numbers on the top to generate the bottom middle number, okay? So we have a 1 and a 1 at the ends, and then we add these two 1s, 1 plus 1 will give us a 2. So this is row 2 of Pascal's triangle. We're going to proceed until we end up at row number 4, okay? So row 3, we start with 1 at the end, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 1 is 3, and then we end with a 1. Row 4, which is where we're going to be stopping at. We're going to add, put a 1 at the end. 1 plus 3 is 4. 3 plus 3 is 6. 1 plus 3 is 4. And then you have a 1 at the end. Okay? Alright, so now what we're going to do after arriving at row 4 is that we're going to extract these numbers. These are going to be the coefficients of the powers raised to the respective um, numerical values. Okay, so extract uh, row 4. We're going to orient it vertically, okay? So we're going to write it down 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Alright? Now we're multiplying x plus y raised to the fourth power. So we have one term is x and then the other term is y. So what we're going to do is we're going to place them um, on each coefficient value that we extracted from Pascal's triangle. So we have x times y and then we have x times y for the 4 and then another x times y for the 6, x times y for the 4 and x times y for 1. Okay. This is multiplication operation here. 
Now we're going to go ahead and assign powers. Since x comes first, it starts off by taking all the power, okay? And then as it descends every single step, the power decreases by 1 until it has no more power, okay? So we have 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. You see how the power descends from 4? All to 0, nothing. The second term, the y, we are going to apply the reverse pattern, okay? So this starts from nothing and ascends all the way to everything, namely 4. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. One thing you have to keep in mind is that the sum of the powers always have to result in the target power here, okay? So if you notice 4 plus 0 is 4, 3 plus 1 is 4, 2 plus 2 is 4, 1 plus 3 is 4, and then 0 plus 4 is 4, okay? That is always the case. Alright, so now that we have um, the powers nicely set up, we're now going to multiply. The f um, now, just a side point, when you're raising the variable to the zeroth power, that variable is just going to become 1, so that's 1, and this one right here becomes 1. The first term of the expansion of x plus y is the product of these three terms here. So 1 times x to the 4th times 1 is x to the 4th. 4 times x to the 3rd times y is 4x to the 3rd y. 6 times x squared y squared is 6x squared y squared. 4 times x times y to the 3rd is 4 x y to the third and then lastly 1 times 1 times y to the fourth is just simply y to the fourth now the expanded form of x plus y to the fourth power can simply be determined by adding up all these terms that we generated here so we have x to the fourth plus 4x to the third y plus 6x squared y squared plus 4xy to the third plus y to the fourth power. Okay, so this is the expansion of x plus y to the fourth using Pascal's triangle. Now, it's just something to keep in mind is the behavior of the signs as it relates to the operation between the terms in the binomial. If you have a plus, what happens is that all your signs will be pluses, okay? But if you have a minus, you're gonna have an alternation in the signs. So you have a plus here, you notice every single sign is a plus. Now in the next presentation, we're going to deal with a minus scenario and I want you to observe how the signs behave when you have a difference between the two terms in the binomial quantity. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. I really appreciate it. If you found the contents of this tutorial helpful in your study of um, expanding polynomials of high degrees, um, do give us a thumbs up. Your positive feedback is very valuable to us. If you have any questions or comments about what we covered in this presentation, just place it in the comments section below and we'll be more than glad to support you. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for updates to other tutorials such as this. More clips can be found on mathgotserve.com, so we encourage you to check it out. Thanks again for watching, and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.